Hi team, welcome back to the day 3 continuation for the Jan 11th batch. So what we will do is uh, look at where we stopped last time on day 2 and then we're going to move forward from there. So starting with that Excel, here is where we started to develop our overall approach and plan. Right team? So primarily what we've done is that uh, we said that fair enough we can do a lot with IDE but how do we now run the tests with RC or WebDriver and what are these really? So once we get into it, I will be able to tell you where the IDE stops to help and why do we have that need now to do the same thing using a remote control or something called a server or something called as a web driver in Selenium. Okay, so to do that, we are continuing to go in the same fashion. So I said everything will start with ID, at least for this. Do we start with ID every time even at a project that we execute at work? No, not necessarily. We can start directly uh, using our Java code. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start off team with going to our Selenium ID. Right. So I'm going to launch up the IDE and quickly change the format to HTML. Um, now I'm going to do a control O and open the last uh, test case that we created using IDE. Looks like there are no commands here. CSL2. Let's see. There you go. So we have some commands out here. So far so good team. Day 1, day 2. This is what we did. Right. And we started to see how we could write our own X paths for every element that we need, right? Now here are the steps, if you observe, that got generated or we could write on our, on our own in an IDE. Now, why do I need to take it into a different application like Java and so on? What is the need for it? Let me give you a quick walk down of the need using a notepad as a background. Right? The whole point team is your IDE is very limited in its capacity in the sense that with IDE you can do a basic record and a basic run. Okay, But if I need to do anything kind of frameworks where I'm trying to test the same set of uh, test case repeatedly for changing sets of data or I want to put some conditions in the sense that if this is the value do this or I want to do a lot of verifications in the sense that uh, has the test passed or failed or if I want to generate reports or if I want to repeat certain sets many number of times or I want to create something called as functions as reusable components and call them. Lots of differences where your IDE is limited. It's a very basic initial level. What does this RC do, remote control or the Selenium server? The idea there is that we have everything that happens on the application is on a browser, right? Your browser has the application within it, correct? Your IDE is able to interact with this browser on a Firefox browser directly. Okay, that is what the IDE does. You can interact with the browser directly. Now, those conditions, loops, rather, I mean, trying to repeat the same steps or generate error reports and so on. As we move forward, there's so much requirements. To do that, I need to get into a programming level. Okay, programming can be done at least for Selenium as a tool using various programming languages. The concept of programming is the same. Once you learn one language to the extent that you need, you don't need to master a whole programming language like a developer is expected to, but you need to know significant bit. Whatever you need to know, we will cover as part of the training. Okay. That programming is, is basically going to enhance those tests and let them run on and let them decide what to do on the application. But for these languages to run and give instructions that, hey, click on this link in the browser, click on do this, do that, they need something in between and that's called as your Selenium server. All right. So all the instructions that I give, I give it to a middleman called Selenium server through my programming language and which we will see now. And the Selenium server in turn goes and performs those on the application. 
That is the difference. Okay, so I need something called as a Selenium server and I need a programming language. Now, a different version of this programming developed more recently and that is called as your web driver. What this web driver does is you can run the same programs. The code will look different a little bit, but instead of running it through server as a middle layer, you can run that directly onto that application. Okay, the same program, little modifications, you make it, convert it into something called as a web driver and you can bypass the Selenium server in this case. You don't need any more of the Selenium server. You can go directly. So we started at IDE. We saw very briefly how it works on the application. Now we will go with pro the, we'll take Java, JUnit, TestNG as the coding language. And we will see how we can run our initial test through server or something called as a RC. RC was the old word. Selenium server is the new word. The RC is like a remote control. Okay. Through this, I can do a lot of things. I can also say this is running on a, let's say, Firefox browser. But I can run the same test on different browsers like Chrome, uh, your Safari, your uh, Internet Explorer. Also, mobile browsers like uh, using WebDriver, we can do it on an iPhone browser or an Android browser which is specific to see the applications that have been built to show how they look on uh, mobiles. For example, your Chase or your Bank of America or uh, let's say your weather.com, all of these have these applications, right? So they have something like m.weather.com uh, or m. Uh, bank of .com. So the way these applications look differently on these browsers are different and hence you need those mobile versions. So a lot can be done as part of it. Okay. So let's start exploring. I don't cover mobile testing in general, uh, but I will try and add some sessions on how we can do the same things on iPhone and so on. Will it be recorded or be as part of this live? We have to see. All right. So now the first few things that I need team is I have I am right now at this level where I have the Selenium uh, ID with this basic script so I'm going to delete this experimental things that we did just to learn how the XPath works save this as let's say CSL4 all right now the first thing I need to do is convert this this what is there is just text Everything Selenium requires is out here. The command, the target and value. It runs. But now I want to run it through the programming language called Java. To do that, I need a different looking code. I need a code that I can take and run it as a Java program. How can we do that? Selenium ID can automatically convert this test into different formats and those formats are typically available out here. You will not see any formats out here initially like yesterday. If you go, let, let me show you what I meant. So basically, uh, when we went on this yesterday, you saw that the format has not all these things displayed. The reason is, uh, it is still experimental. They still have a few defects to fix on it, but most need, I mean, most whatever we need from our requirement standpoint, it works that way, all right? So if you go to options to see the different format, come to options, go to options, and then we can check a few things. Tim, quick check, is my audio good? All right, looks like my audio is good. Probably if anyone has an issue, you'll have to check at your end. All right, thanks. So go to options, go to options. In here, there's something called as enable experimental features. Check this. When you check this, what it does is it lets us use those experimental features that are available in IT and click on OK. All right. Now go back to options and you'll see the different formats that you could see the same code in. So if I say test ng remote control, and click on OK. This is exactly the message that I've told you about experimental features. And click on OK. You will see the same code in a different format altogether. 
all right if i go here and say format is j unit for remote control you will see the same code which we saw the command target value j converted into a java code now we will take this and evolve that more aggressively okay we will start with a basic j unit code today and then we will move to a test ng code now what we have is the source code do we know anything about it not yet we will get there but all i'm going to do is copy this just take a simple new text file all right and just say uh, csl4 underscore j unit underscore source just the name of a text file and i'm going to put this there what does it do what does it mean right now not both we will come to that okay i'm going to save this now what i basically have is i've created that code how do we run this code now so to run a java code thing you have various different types of options the option that i recommend and the tool that i use uh, for my maintaining a java code and so on is the eclipse platform eclipse is again a free tool okay it's a open source tool you can go and do a search actually all the installation documents are there on that uh if you search for eclipse id installation eclipse id installation okay you will find the links of how you can get the eclipse eclipse.org/downloads you can go here and download the whole documentation of how you can download this is available depending on your windows version you can take that okay if you want you can also use the download which of the entire folder that is there in the selenium script send files okay if you go in here you will see the all files underscore eclipse so you can click on this and download this file it's about 180 mb and just unzip it and copy that entire folder so basically i did the same thing some time back because i didn't run have eclipse earlier on this i downloaded that folder this file from that service and now i've taken when i unzip it all i did is i created i just dragged the whole content into my c drive and that comes under eclipse okay what is this eclipse eclipse simplest definition is a place where i can store my java code or write my java code edit it save it and run it whatever i want to do with java in terms of running those and so on i can do it from eclipse okay that is a platform through which i can execute a lot of things related with my coding that is the thing you definitely need now what is this j unit and test ng what are they how are they related with java i'll come to it very shortly but let's do a run of this and launch eclipse i created the j unit code of that <coughs> IDE script and we put it into our folder in J11 out here. Now I'm saying I need a place from where I can run this code. Now what I'm doing is I've launched. So just in that folder, I double clicked on Eclipse the application Eclipse.exe file. Once I do that, your Eclipse launches. There are lots of features within this tool team. There are so many things that can be achieved out here. Okay, do not. worry about too many things just go from the very basics in this all right the latest version of java is always recommended so what i would recommend is that you go to java.com to run any of these things you need the latest version of java just go to java.com click on free java download and start your download of the latest version whatever version this is called as jdk versions and so on java development kit you can download it directly from here all right all of these documentations have been sent to you as part of the welcome pack as well right how to install java eclipse and everything is part of your welcome pack as well thing now if you go to file okay so team so far so good this is again 
when many new tools, many new things, so you will have to repeat it while watching this video. You may have to perform the same things offline. It will help you practice. Trust me, it takes a little bit of practice. It takes a little lot of effort from your end to get there. If you just watch things, it's all theoretical. You have to practice. So watch the video and practice over it. All right. Now, what after you have done with Eclipse, what do we do now? What you've got to do is you will start with something called as File New Java Project. What this is, is basically saying that now we will start a completely new Java project. When I do that, I will get to name that project. So I'm going to call this as J11 underscore DDF1. What is this? J11 is the Jan 11th batch. DDF is Data Driven Framework Project 1. Alright? And just say finish. Don't do anything else right now. You will see that getting generated out here. Okay? This is like your sidebar. Just like your Windows Explorer, you have an Explorer tool out here. Alright? What I've done is created a new project. That is step 1. Everything else is gray out here. You have something called as console and lot of other features out here. We will come to whatever we need to use eventually. Now, after we have done that team, what we will do is if you expand and you go, there is a subfolder in this Java project that we created called SRC. That is the source folder. Here is where I can create different projects, uh, different I mean, this is something called as a package. I can put all my code as part of this folder or create a new one. So for the basic level, we will keep things as is and create new Java classes into it. Now comes the technical part team. Okay. What is this Java JUnit test engine? Java is a programming language, right? It took uh, over a decade and a half or more for Java to develop and come to where it is today. Okay, it started off as very powerful, simple uh, programming language, and then new features kept getting added to it, kept getting added to it, and so on. As that happened, Java is an open source. I mean, basically, there's no license fee for someone who wants to use Java. Just the hardware is different, and so on. So different other investments come in, but no license fee directly. So a huge user community started growing okay so java you said started very slow and then probably and you know eventually started growing very rapidly uh, not necessarily a great representation of the facts but giving you a perspective of it with that there's a lot of new people who are using java for different reasons some people are using it to build applications like what you see in the web based applications or simple windows based application like notepad or excel or powerpoint all of this you've installed on your app system and they're running so you could use a programming language to develop such tools and be able to produce results out of it so this is saying how application should behave. That's your program, right? So as new, the usage has started to happen, The it's just not no longer developers who are trying to develop new applications and so on. What has happened is there's a lot of usage in different ways and one of the usage is that the developers also wanted to test their own code if that is working correctly or not. They wanted to do testing and uh, the testing that the developers typically get done is called as your unit testing all right unit testing is basically saying that whatever pieces of code that the developers are doing they will try and test it themselves before they move it on to the next one before we come in and say that hey your code is working correctly or not the developers will try and test it out themselves that basically they're referring to as unit testing now if they need to successfully do unit testing they basically didn't have any automation tools so now as the usage of Java increased, the community has developed something called as a better way to be able to test their own Java codes. And they have built something called as a JUnit. Okay? JUnit is nothing but the a subset of Java or something that has been derived out of Java with predefined specific information as to what to do and so on. They're like shortcuts. Okay? Everything has a purpose and those are called as your annotations and they start with a let character called as your at symbol like in your email address. 
those have been built together and it's called now as a JUnit framework. Okay, JUnit was derived to help programmers or developers be able to effectively test and improve the test, uh, the uh, how they do their own test on their own code for their own unit testing and that's how JUnit arrived. Okay, so with a few more additional features to it came up TestNG. Okay, that's the next level as it went along TestNG came. Alright, TestNG. These are nothing but they're still based on Java coding. They still have everything related with Java, but they have a few more things. They have something specific with JUnit and these have something specific with testing. They have specifically, they have basically created something that a developer can take and readily use. And those are nothing but annotations. Okay. That is what we will look at. Today. All right. So if someone says that I know JUnit very well and says that I don't know Java, it doesn't make sense because JUnit is nothing but the whole of Java. Okay. Plus these about a dozen different annotations. That's it a dozen different predefined meaning things and the same thing is this is nothing but test engine is nothing but the whole of Java and a little bit of the this not necessary when I say the whole of Java whatever they use to whatever extent they want to use all right so as part of our training we will focus on both JUnit and test engine in the sense we will use Java extensively but we will also see what are these JUnit annotations and test engine annotations how do we use them how do we apply them but the core you have to understand that we are using Java in this all right so now if you look at in this source I can create something called as Java classes Okay, which is better to use as a tester? Uh, not sure. I mean, see, a lot of people love JUnit, a lot of people love TestNG. I love Java. That's the core thing. I can do everything with Java. TestNG has better error reporting. The reporting is more UI based. Uh, there is more uh, predefined information that comes out out of this test when you execute them in TestNG. So TestNG has been more refined versions of JUnit. Okay, so typically test ng seems to be a little more easier to work with, but actually it doesn't matter because our reporting we will do it differently, everything we will do differently is in Selenium. So you can use anything. Okay, but as is test ng little more popular if you look at it, but JUnit they say is little more easier to learn. There is nothing if you learn Java, you've learned almost everything. JUnit is just a five percent more learning. Test NG is just another six percent more learning. That is it. Okay. Now the next step is on the source. If I right click and say new and go to and click on this class, what it does is it creates something called as a Java class. Okay. That is your starting point. All right. From here we can go about doing whatever we want. So what are these classes? Don't worry. Forget theory. Once we start using them, it becomes very easy for you to understand what and how. Okay, so I'm going to say DDF1 under, oops, I wanted to name this as DDF1 underscore 1. So I'll right click and click on, um, there's no rename here. What I can do is just click and say F2 and I can rename it DDF1 underscore 1. Okay, so what I've done is I've created something called as a Java class. Do you see this team? public class ddf1 underscore 1. What are these pub words public class this and this open and close curl brackets? That is the syntax of a Java programming language. Okay, everything that you see now on this white screen has a specific meaning. Every line has a specific meaning. Okay, the good part is I don't have to go about creating all the code from scratch at least for the first project for this exercise. Then how are we going to do it? The way we will do it is you remember that code that we generated and put it in this text document, right? If I double click, I can copy this whole code, okay, and take this whole code, code and put it in here. Now do you see? this whole code this is your Java code okay this is entire coding is Java but what we're using is JUnit okay so 
Now, the first thing that we have to do, team, is to know that this red crosses out here is basically saying that Eclipse is telling us that I don't understand this command or there is an error in this command. Can you please fix it? So, unless Eclipse understands every line and is able to recognize what to do, when we run this code, it does not know what to do. Okay. For example, if you go to any application, okay, you right click and say view source. You see the HTML code for this application, right? Where is it? Out here, somewhere out here, right? So, unless this code is written correct, correctly, the output out here will not be correct. Okay. For a web-based application, HTML is the programming language. Okay. It's basically not a very advanced language, but a simple markup language they say. Okay, very simple language. Java is more complex. So depending on this code, the output will vary. All right, they do different things. So that's the first thing we'll need to do. So what have we done? We have created a new project. Under the source, I did a right click and I said new class. And then I gave the name. The first thing you need to do, team, is the class name that you gave here. Do you see this? DDF1 underscore 1. Yeah. This name should be the same as the name that you see here. Public class, instead of CSL4, I'm going to say DDF1 underscore 1. That is the first thing we need to do. Why? Because whatever is the name, I should have something called as a class within it. Okay? Just take some of my statements at face value. As we develop, you will learn some of these things. If we try and go in depth about each word, what would happen is we will have so many things to learn, you will give up very quickly. Rather, we will, what have we learned? We have learned some of these commands, uh, how to recognize XPath, how to then perform some actions on the application. So we'll focus there. That is something we understand. We will get there. We will come to Java slowly. Okay? Now, the second thing you do is this package, com, example, dot test, whatever is there, delete it. Okay. Here is my Java code as I need. Now let me save it. As soon as I save it, that file has got saved. Okay. In my Eclipse folder, I've created this new package and that's where I've saved it. Now there are lots of red crosses. Do you see this? Yeah. So what are these now? I have to tell Eclipse that, hey, Eclipse, this Java class that we created, whatever, DDF1 underscore 1, whatever we created, has to use Selenium. It has to know Selenium, number one. It has to know J unit, number two. Okay? What does it mean? As is the Eclipse or any Java code. When I say Eclipse team, I'm just meaning Eclipse is a storing place to view Java uh, scripts, Java code and all that. Java comes very lean as is. Okay? But there are powerful things like called as packages that are or jar files. They're basically archive files that we can use. So if I say that, hey, this Java code requires to know JUnit, then I have to link something called as a jar file. Okay. These are nothing but Java archives. Okay. What are these Java archives? The community of users who've been using Java over a period of time have created certain meaningful reusable code. So they've created one code and said, hey, you don't have to create this code every time. Okay, I've created these three or four blocks of code. You readily use them whenever you want. Okay, if my Java code has to use them, then we have packaged all of these things together into one jar file. And then I'll say that whenever I want to use any of this already defined code, we will just call them. Okay, so I just have to link these jar files with it. So did Selenium. Selenium has created a similar thing for Java. Okay, it has created specific things. What do I mean by the specific things? Things like, so you got this picture right in? Things like, what is the selenium dot click? What does it mean? When someone, this should actually, if I pass some information, tell the application of the Java code to go to that application, find a element with a specific X path that we define and go and click on that. All of these steps have been predefined in a specific jar file. Okay. Those are your Selenium jars. 
okay and the other things are all of these inputs now making sense team again as I told you new topics you need to review them a couple of times you need to go through them then it will slowly start to fall in place all right now what I need are these jar files if I go to my folder C colon slash selenium I have already downloaded these jar files out here okay I have something called as uh, do you see the selenium java jar file selenium server jar file do you see this J unit jar file okay where are these coming from J unit jar you can directly download it you can just do a Google search you'll find it or use it as is okay different versions of it. selenium server standalone or selenium server jar file you go to selenium selenium hq.org hq.org okay once you go out here you can download different things out here go to the download selenium and now for Java you have the jar file out here do you see this download okay and so on the best thing to do is forget about all of these individual jar files and just download the latest selenium server okay just download the selenium server once you download this you will be able to do a lot of things with it all right so selenium server is basically that jar files so that all of these commands can start to get recognized right so now with those jar files already created out here I can readily use them if you want to get a quick start what you can do is on the screencast uh, not only do we have that Eclipse, but I also have something called as all files underscore jar. You can download this. This has all those jar files that I've just shown. Okay, so you can readily start to use them. You don't need to go and download everything separately from the application. Now I have to tell that this uses those jar files. How do I do that? So you go to your project, go to your right click on the main, uh, your whole project, go to your properties in here and under the Java build path do you see something called as the Java build path here is where I will say that I will use certain external jars in this why so basically these are all add-ons okay uh, as is your your if you're driving a car basically do you want a GPS inbuilt do you want a backup camera uh, do you want alloy wheels or regular wheels do you need a sunroof or a moonroof uh, do you know a sports version leather interior all of these are what externals or if you're building a house you have the different upgrades right so you get a base that's your Java core Java anything that you need to use additionally we have to link those jar files to it okay so now click on this add external jars and select those jars from that folder whichever you want let's first select the J unit okay now I can say open and say OK to it. Once I say OK, observe that a lot of these red crosses have disappeared. Do you see these red crosses disappeared? Have I explained each of the steps team? No. I'm just showing how to make things work first. First we make it work, then we can get into the coding part of it. Okay? Had I not had this, there were more red crosses here and this those annotations you remember I told you with that at symbol are all out here okay so these are I'm basically saying that we will now start this got recognized because that jar file has been associated now similarly I will right click go to the properties go to my Java build path and add the selenium server jar okay this is also selenium server and this is also just a short name for it but I'll take the same thing it is 2.5.0 version what is the latest one that is on the website 2.16 so I think we are okay doesn't matter so it's it's probably a little more uh, features got added into it but I think this should also work okay if things don't work then we can always upgrade to the latest version okay we're gonna take this open and say okay now observe if any of the other things get recognized as well those red crosses get eliminated do you see a lot of red crosses getting eliminated <coughs> sorry in fact almost everything got eliminated okay so at this point what we have done is 
we have created a code that is correct to look at. Will it perform correctly or not? Different issue. At least from a Selenium, from a Java perspective, there is no error in trying to execute them. Okay, it will understand everything. All these things as exclamation is just a warning. You don't have to worry about them so much at the moment. Okay, if you do your mouse over, you will see. The beauty of Eclipse team is this kind of simple help. See, that red cross of lines it cannot understand. Uh, it will give you all the features to be able to store right correctly. Different colors depending on the type of code and so on. So all these are built in to just to make your coding easier. Alright, now with this done, I don't even have to save. It's already saved. Okay. And I don't see any more red crosses here. That's the first thing. How do we remove those red X? Basically, remove all the errors before we run it. All right. Now, we get to the next level. So, what was the first level? You have your Eclipse ready. You created a new project. We created a new class. Then, we got the code that we got from IDE. We put it out here. And we associated only two jars. J unit jar and the Selenium server jar. Once those two jars have been associated with our test, I could see that the code seems to be more uh, ready to be used. Now what we're going to do is run the test. How or run this Java code. Forget about test team. I'm just using the word test because finally it's automation testing. But this ddf1 underscore 1 dot Java is ready for to get executed or to run. To run this, what I need to do is go here and you can either click on this or go to run as, click on this uh, drop down and say run as Java J unit test. You see this? You can run as Java application and so on. You're going to run it as a J unit test. Once you say you run it as a J unit test, the execution starts to happen. Okay? Now, it starts to interact with you and say, hey, I tried to run. Like how we saw in IDE, when we did a run, we got that failures or passed and so on, and where it failed and all that information. Even this, this is also an IDE. It is an integrated development environment. And so is this Eclipse. Only thing is Eclipse is a more more powerful IDE where you can do a lot of uh, development on Java program. It tells us exactly what happened. We tried to run. It took about one second to run. We had one error out of one run. Okay. And where did that error occur? It is telling us exactly. It is saying that test CSL4, whatever, wherever it is. See this one? Test CSL4. This is where the error occurred. What are these? What are these names? Different names that have automatically come. We have not gone to the code level. But if you go to the failure trace, it will tell us in a very detailed fashion what happened. Okay, the first one typically is a summary of the error. Okay, now you have to do the trial and error team. Okay, you will follow the process, you will follow what is needed, but as you encounter issues, you have to start to fix them. So, you find an issue, you fix it, and you run it again. You find another issue, you fix it and run it. So, there's a lot of trial and error. You try, you get an error, you repeat change something, go back. As you build this, you will build a lot of expertise. You will get better at doing things. All right. What is this error? It says, could not contact Selenium server. Uh, have you started it on local host? 4444. So what does this mean? Basically, the whole point here now gets very important. Okay. I have created in my Eclipse, I have created a successful Java or a JUnit code. Okay. Right now, I'm saying here is my browser and my application is there within it. All right, so I want to take this code and run it out here. To do this run, for my Selenium server needs to be as the middle point. Okay, my code will talk to the Selenium server, and the Selenium server in turn will talk with the application, and it is going to be a two-way communication. Okay, so to do that, we need to create a private channel where this communication can happen. Okay, and those are called as your port numbers. All right, it's a technical term, but the easiest way to understand this is it is a specific communication channel. Your uh, the police is communicating on a specific frequency. 
right? Your FM stations are coming. So if you want to listen to your favorite radios, you have to tune to their uh, station because they are communicating on that channel. Okay. If you want to listen to something else, you switch your stations, right? So it's like walkie-talkies. Where do you want to communicate? And my Eclipse, the ones which we are using right now, has to communicate on the same port number with the server, so they both understand. Okay. So to do this, the first thing I have to do is something called as run or launch the Selenium server on a specific port number. Okay. Then I have to instruct that. The Selenium server is running on this port number. Let's say 1234 or 4444, whatever number. Okay. And I take this number and provide this number to my Java code and say that Selenium server is now ready to communicate with us on that port number. And the Java code has to know which port number to run forward. All right. To do that, basically, the step where do you see this local host? comma uh, colon 4444 do you see this here have you started it on localhost colon 4444 where do we see that in the code do you see this out here team there is a number called 4444 and localhost here is the starting point where we are saying where is the selenium server to be running my java code is here it is already saying 4444 now i have to go back and run my Selenium server on that port. How do we run it? Okay, here is my server. Okay, that is where my servers are. I have to say that I have to be running this. To run this, what I need to do is, if I open launch underscore 444, this is not there, that's okay. Right click, edit, and there you go. I have to go to this specific folder. I basically, okay, two ways team. One is what you see here, the harder way, you start with your run and do something called as CMD. That's your command prompt. Okay, command prompt is a different way of looking at your whole directory and so on. You can do some specific executions from this. So, cd dot dot is a command that will take you back into C drive. Okay, basically going one folder down, like you navigate on the folders out here, you do the same thing here. Okay, now the first thing I need to do out here is CD Selenium. What CD Selenium does is change the directory to something else. Okay, CD dot dot is taking it one level back. CD space, the name of the directory will take us there. Now, if I say DIR, that is a command which lists down all the folders that are in files that are present in that directory okay selenium directory uh, and here are all the files that are present in it all right now what this command doing out here is the same thing it's saying let's change the directory to where the jar files this that is the first part that is what we've done here so far team. okay this no actually not yet i have to go to cd space jar Okay, there is my jar. In this, if I do directory, I see all those jar files and all those files that we uh, have in the folder here. The same thing is displayed here. Now, the second step is to put this command in here. What does it mean? I have to say Java hyphen jar. What is this? This is a command saying that I want to run a jar file as a Java file in here. In this directory, it is present. Now, I have to name that file. The name of that file is whatever you see here. Okay, this whole thing, I'll go and put it in there. I'll say selenium, okay, server hyphen stand alone hyphen 2.5.0 jar. Okay, that is the whole command. And then the final thing I'm saying is we. this is basically instruction to launch the server. I have to now say on which port. And say port 4444. When I hit enter and if my command is correct, it will now launch the Selenium server on that port. Okay, all the steps that you saw that we step performed on the CMD, this command prompt thing out here team, you can do the same thing in a very easy fashion. Just take a text file, right click, say new, text document, 
uh, and let's name this as server underscore launch underscore 4444. That is the name I gave. Okay. In this, all I will do is first same thing as is. Copy this whole thing and put it here. Okay. The second command is this. Copy this whole thing and put it out here. But instead of port 12345, 1235, one, I have 4444. Making sense? Team, everyone good so far? I know a lot of things are coming up uh, as an introduction, so you have to definitely practice it. Are there any security issues? How do we know what port to use? So there are a few generic things. There are some ports which different devices drivers and applications which are already using on your system okay so you can use a different combination typically try and keep it at a four uh, digit number you can write one two three one or one 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 and so on. there are certain port numbers which are already being used okay so you don't need more than three or four ports initially once we get to the grid when when you start to watch the grid you will see you can launch different servers on different ports and do a parallel execution of the tests okay but for this just take any of these i've used uh, actually a lot of them so you'll see see one two three four one two three five one two three six four 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 you can use any of these standard ones now the only difference is i've changed this port number. now I am going to do an Alt F A and save this not as a text file. I'm going to set save it as all files, but the extension that I will give to this is called .bat or a batch file. Okay, created a text, put these two statements, and now I said let's create a .bat. Once I do that. Instead of saying text documents, I selected all files and then I gave an extension and says save. Okay. This is now saved, if you notice, where is this? As a Windows batch file. The text version of it is out here. But this is the one which is now a Windows batch file. If I double click this, it will perform the same steps that I've shown you out here changing the directory to where those jar files are and then launching that selenium server. So instead of we having to do through the command prompt, this is a good shortcut to you. Alright? Now I can close this command prompt and let's try this. So just double click. If it is working correctly, it should have launched the selenium server in the background somewhere. Okay? Sometimes you will be able to see it, sometimes you don't. Uh, Block some features of this program. Okay, Windows Firewall has blocked some features of. Okay, uh, public access allow clips to communicate on these networks. Public networks. Okay, allow access. This was, in fact, for the first run itself, but that's okay. Now my Selenium server is hopefully running in the background. You don't see a command prompt being existing anywhere, but sometimes you can go to your task manager, see if it is uh, working as one of the processes and so on. Okay? Don't have to worry too much about it. It should be working in the background by now. Now, the best way to test it is rerun your test. Run as JUnit test. Okay? Could not contact Selenium server, localhost 4444. Why hasn't this already been started? That is the command we gave here. Server underscore launch 4444. Uh, okay. Right click, edit. CDC colon slash Selenium jar uh, dot jar uh, hyphen port 2.5.0. Still the same thing. Okay. Now if I say run, it's still saying runtime exception. Have you started it? Is there any pop-up message that is blocking this? No, not yet. Okay. Let me try and do the same thing using command prompt and see what's happening. Alright, where is that? Here's the one instruction. So I'm gonna take the same thing and put it using the same command prompt thing. So the first thing I'm going to go is cd uh, cd selenium cd jar uh, 
and now the next one is Java hyphen jar selenium hyphen server hyphen stand alone hyphen two dot five dot o make sure all this is correct I dot o dot jar and then port number hyphen port four 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 Java oh man okay it is not letting me even run the Java okay so what happens team sometimes is it may take a very short output to fix it or sometimes it can take even a long well, let's see if I go to my program files and go to the Java here is where my JDK has been installed okay sometimes I will need to change the path to how this is getting recognized how my Java is there is Java really not installed on my system no Java is present otherwise Eclipse also will not run okay you if you want you can see um, this is the first thing in fact we have to do one of the first thing is Java properly installed or not this is where we'll have to install the Java thing team and if I go to JRE and the bin folder here is the Java application this is where it has been installed the Java 6 version is here so if I double click the Java is now running in the background let's see again if this works it's still not recognizing not recognized after tech. all I have to do is go to the path I think uh, did I send across um, what is that I was about to say uh, there was an instruction document about exactly how to take care of this that is but that's got nothing to do with uh, this error but in general whenever you get the errors you have to look at your overall path structure to it so team what I will do is offline since we already towards the time I'll create a small video about if Java is not successfully installed then what you do you have to change the uh, path variable that is there for your system to be pointing to that folder where Java is present okay that should be changed in your overall path so I am going to do that create a small uh, video out of it and make sure that it points to it so basically once I go to my environment variables here you will see something called as a variable called as a path okay this path sometimes does not have a pointer to this information I, I should definitely create a small thing out of this see do you see that C colon where is this this is where it is right so if I right click and say edit address I get the entire address okay I'll copy this use a semicolon at the end and paste this whole thing what I'm telling by doing this is that anytime I can run Java from anywhere the java.exe application can be run from anywhere the same thing I will give you in a small document as an instruction team and put it up and if possible create a small video out of it Oh no, I don't need to do this. So that anytime you can pick it up and do the same. But let me try if this works. Sometimes the only issue I'm saying is that I have to restart system. Sometimes it is needed to restart and then it should be good. But let me give it a quick try and see now if it works. It's still not working. <laughs> I think once I restart I should be able to do it, but otherwise this is now changed. Path variable. Edit. Yeah, this is that. So what is needed is present. So I just have to do a restart and see if it is working or not. So team, I'm going to do a restart and uh, see if it works out. All right. Um, but I can't do this restart with you guys holding on to the session. So team, uh, any questions? Couldn't do the run. We will do the run tomorrow. I just have to make sure that it is working. What is a good source to le learn scripting for creating dot BAT files not too much Oksana the only few batch files that I need to create right now are for these okay and when you want to run your Java as applications externally also you'll create it but the jar launching the server is the only batch file that we need at the moment right any space at the end of port number no Madhu I don't think there is any issue with the space my Java itself is not yet tuned to run that is the reason team any other questions In corporate level also is the four digit port number is standard yeah typically standard uh, Rama but uh, you can 
see that's the reason you'll also see 4444 as a default port number that is most widely used but again this can be widely used more often so you try and move to a different one you can use 1234 1235 but you can survive with 4444 at least for your practice what does starting the server do what does starting the server is launching that application which can be the mediator for our java code to interact with the browser okay this code as is cannot go and execute commands on an application okay the server is the one which is taking or it's like a remote control which is going to do that so the server is sitting in between to take instructions from here performing it on the applications and the other way around you are given a jar file how do you know how do you unit test that rama i think that would be a good question for you to put it into the google group anything linked with today's session is what is more uh, applicable for the entire audience please team questions you have to start server for rc yes when we are using this type of a code the server needs to be running at a specific port number else we will not be able to execute that when we come to web driver it web driver will let us bypass that server concept we don't have to have the uh, server run yeah but for this we need it all right team uh, that's it for today then we'll see you back tomorrow and what we will do is uh, I will also create that small documentation of how to make sure that your Java is installed. This is the first, in fact, check that we do. I just started putting all the things that I needed a couple of hours before this, so I didn't really test. So 4444 is now is for starting the RC. Anything you can use any port number doesn't matter. If I write 4444, then I launch it there. If I write 1234 here, then I will launch the server on that port. So depending on, they both have to be in sync. That's the criteria. Okay, then I do the test more. It will be more comfortable for you on that. All right, team. Thank you. Bye for now. We'll see you back tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye then. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Bye.